Hey guys, it's hashtag Ask Lauren, Degrassi edition. Wake up in the morning, feeling shine the me, I gotta go to school. Today, I am answering all kinds of questions from you about the Canadian classic, iconic television series, Degrassi. Why? Well, because Degrassi is an incredible TV show that's been a huge part of my life for most of my life. And now we can all relive our youth and binge watch Degrassi and Degrassi Junior High on YouTube. Thanks to Encore Plus Media and Canadian Media Fund who are sponsoring and collaborating with me on this video. They have started a YouTube channel with the series from the early days fully on YouTube so you can watch beginning to end, get lost in it, and just spend hours and hours reliving what is the best Canadian television show ever. Um, so go do that now, go subscribe to their channel. I have linked it below in the description and uh, you know, get a lot of popcorn and dig in. All right, so I'm just gonna give you some background. I will get to the questions. I had put out a call on my Instagram asking you what your questions were to me about Degrassi. Um, and I'll give you some background as to why I even care so much and kind of how this whole thing came full circle. But basically I grew up in the 80s, so I watched Degrassi and Degrassi Junior High, the early 80s series, the first rendition of it with um, Joey, Snake, Wheels, Spike, Steph, all those characters. And I think I was in junior high or early high school when it became popular. I didn't watch it because I think I was too young when it first came out and it didn't really sort of catch on until a few years later. Um, and so I watched it then, was obsessed fully. And then basically, if you didn't know, I, I used to be a TV host and producer and I worked for a channel in Canada called Much Music and Much Music aired Degrassi for years, the whole time I was there. So I kind of became this Degrassi super fan who got involved with doing all the interviews with the cast, going on set, doing behind the scenes stuff. And I was stoked on it. I think I was the only one that actually cared that much about Degrassi at Much Music. So they assigned me all of those projects. Um, and I got to know the cast of characters. Even the actress that plays Holly J, Charlotte Arnold, is sort of a cousin of mine because her stepdad is a Toyota, part of the Toyota family. Anyway, we're fam. And then I became Degrassi fam. And then I got to know everybody. And then I just spent my whole career in television pretty much talking about Degrassi. If you watched much music and you're from Canada, I would come on during the commercial breaks and you know, dish on the gossip of the show and the storylines and give my opinions. And sometimes, oftentimes, members of uh, the cast would be with me and we'd hang out on the couch in the commercial breaks and it was always so much fun. Then I even got to be in a episode playing a cameo in season 12. Um, Chaz Bono was also in that episode and I play one of the celebrity uh, Battle of the Bands judges. Um, and that was incredible. I am so blown away that I actually got to be on an episode of Degrassi. And I spent a lot of time on that set. Um, it's in like North York. Um, and then I continued watching. I basically got moved over to MTV Canada and we started a show called After Degrassi that I co-hosted with Phoebe Dykstra. And uh, we then got to talk about the show even more so in a half an hour episode following uh, the episode every week on MTV Canada and play games and just be ridiculous with everybody from the cast. So I have a lot of memories about Degrassi and so I could talk a lot about it. But let's start from the beginning because there's essentially three major things I want to drive home here. The three things I'm obsessed with when it comes to Degrassi. For one, the theme song to Degrassi Junior High. Wake up in the morning feeling shine the me, I gotta go to school. I don't think I can make it, don't think I can take it, I wonder what I'm gonna do. But when I look around I see that someone singing it like off tune like there's some weird harmonies going on there <laughs> but it's the best and I hum that song quite often actually I really like the original version that version that you just heard also my fave characters have to go back to Degrassi Junior High also because that's when I first started watching the show and I was pretty obsessed with Joey Jeremiah and Spike a lot of parents want to throw me out just because I'm pregnant oh, this is so dumb Everybody already knows you're pregnant. 
What's kicking you out gonna prove? They say I set a bad example. I even pretty much ended up looking like Spike <laughs> when I was in high school and I actually didn't even make this connection until right now that I actually looked like Spike. But yeah, uh, I didn't get pregnant like Spike. But yeah, I guess I like channeled my inner rebel, my inner Spike without even realizing it. <laughs> Uh, Joey Jeremiah, heartthrob, obviously cute, adorable, always with the hat, the zit remedy. Everybody wants something. Everybody His pickup lines never would have worked on me though, um, in junior high. <laughs> hey Stephanie, Joey D. Jeremiah, D for doctor, at your service. I give great operations. And the third thing I'm obsessed with is just the plethora of social issues and teen issues that the show covers. This show, when it came out in the 80s, was so groundbreaking. A lot of it got censored once they um, syndicated the series elsewhere in the world. A lot of episodes didn't even get shown or parts were cut out because it was too um, sensitive and too um, adult content, I guess, for people. So um, things about sex and promiscuity and abuse and parental abuse and uh, all sorts of things, drugs, adoption, uh, they cover everything. There isn't any stone left unturned when it comes to Degrassi and of course that just continued on through every season, through every generation of Degrassi and it really never gets old. No other show really handles issues the way Degrassi does in such a real and raw uh, way and really gets to sort of the heart and the kind of awkwardness of all of it and uh, the cast is always realistic. Like you know when you watched other shows when you were a kid and everyone in high school or junior high seemed like they were 10 years older than they actually were. The thing that's amazing about the Degrassi cast is that they're always usually exactly the same age as the characters they're playing and uh, so I feel like that just makes it really authentic. Uh, I guess that was four things but anyways I felt like that third thing all tied into it because you've got actors experiencing the same issues as the characters and the students in the show and so I think that just makes it seamless and really easy to watch. All right, let's get into these questions, shall we? I got a lot, a lot of them were a little bit repetitive. Um, and I think a lot of these are coming from people who watched after Degrassi or some form of what I did when I was on television. But regardless, if you're a Degrassi fan like me or you wanna relive some of these memories, then hopefully these are relevant to you. And if you have other questions, leave them in the comments and I'll answer in the comments there. Um, so this one's funny and you're probably all thinking this because when we think of Degrassi we often think about Drake, Drizzy. So Fella Bell Q said, are you able to forget that Drake was on the show when you think of him as a singer? Or does his past acting always come to mind when you hear his music? Okay, so Drake, of course, played Jimmy in Degrassi, The Next Generation. He got shot. Everybody knows this. Even if you didn't watch Degrassi, everybody knows Drake. Um, so everybody knows that he did this. And I don't think it makes him any less cool. In fact, it makes him way cooler. He's so awkward looking. I mean, he's a legit teenager there. I am obsessed with Drake. I don't even know if you knew that, but I love Drake. I mean, who doesn't? I'm Canadian, I'm from Toronto, the six. Uh, but no, when I hear him saying, I'm never thinking of Jimmy in the wheelchair or Jimmy getting shot or any of Jimmy's foibles in Degrassi, um, it's like two separate things for me. It's so compartmentalized. And I will say that I wasn't such a hardcore Degrassi viewer during that time. So season, I might be getting this wrong, but Degrassi, the next generation, like season one, to nine I was at that point like in college a young adult like working I wasn't paying attention to Degrassi I knew of it and I had if I saw it I would probably watch a little bit of it like I knew Spinner and Craig and all the characters and stuff like I definitely have reference material for that season but I just wasn't watching it as religiously as I watched the early early years in the 80s and then sort of the later uh, seasons when I actually worked with um, the people at Degrassi when I was that much music. So a lot of that stuff isn't as prominent in my mind from those seasons. Kwanitz XX, what up girl? She says, what was the best part about hosting after Degrassi? Well, a lot of things were the best part about hosting after Degrassi. Uh, first, I got to host with 
one of my greatest friends, Phoebe, uh, who I knew, uh, we, well, we became friends when I worked in television and then we got to do that show together and it was so much fun. Also Callista and Natalia, the kind of friends of After Degrassi. And of course the cast, like really getting to know the cast apart from just like being actors, uh, going to the Degrassi rap parties because we were like part of the Degrassi fam, um, you know, when we were hosting and producing all that content with them. So that was, I mean, it's hard to pick one best thing. Also just the dedicated Degrassians, like the hardcore Degrassi fans. Yes, they're called Degrassians. Um, that would show up every week to be in the audience or show up even when, you know, like t Monroe was like in the, in the studio with us and like there was no interaction with fans. They'd be at the window like with signs and like freaking out and just like there to support. And they really are probably the best fandom I've ever come across, the Degrassi fans. I mean, I feel like I'm part of it. I am such a nerd. Like often I wore my Degrassi like uniform shirt when I hosted the special in the parking lot at Much Music and um, you know, took photos with all the fans that came and everyone was just like so awesome and I think just by way of being tied to the Degrassi family in some way um, it's just something special for me because like I said it's all sort of has come full circle since being a fan of it when I was a kid. Uh, Yum Salad who I met when I went and did my book signing in Los Angeles I don't know if this is a joke question who is your favorite character and why is it Manny? <laughs> or maybe he meant to say why isn't it Manny? My favorite character is, is not Manny. In fact, I don't really like Manny. <laughs> My favorite character, I don't, it's, again, it's so hard to pick one because I would have to pick ones from different generations. So Spike would be my favorite character from uh, junior high. Eli is my favorite character from the, it's not next generation, it's like the last half of the next generation season where it was just called Degrassi. Um, mainly because he's cryptic and dark and is obsessed with death and it's just a it's an interesting character and storyline and then when it comes to storyline I think one of the things that Degrassi did really well was Adam's um, storyline about being transgender and of course that was when I was really in the heart of watching the show for much music and talking about it and like pretty invested in the storylines and I really think they just handled it very well in terms of talking and discussing about that topic openly and positively and yet showing a lot of the um the controversy and issues that someone going through that would deal with and I think uh no one really at the time was doing that. I believe they won an Emmy for a particular episode um, regarding Adam's character. So, um, you know, they showed it from from beginning to transition and, and everything. And so I, I also like there's a supportive cast of friends and I don't know, I think that is just probably one of their most successful storylines in the history of the show. Uh, so that would be my favorite one. Kaylee Santiago also asked who my favorite guy and girl character is. Maybe that's like couple, but definitely Eli and Claire. If you watch me on Much Music, I was always shipping Eli and Claire and I just think they're sweet and adorable. Again, I saw their whole relationship from beginning to end um, when I watched the season uh, when I was a television host. And so I was really into it. Also knew both of them pretty well personally and did a lot of interviews with them and they're both incredibly sweet and talented. Aislinn Paul is so talented, Monroe is so talented. Um, so maybe that plays into it a little bit but they just became my favorite Degrassi couple and guy and girl character. A lot of people are asking things about what I related to most. Oh hey Jen, who's a huge Degrassi fan and came to all of our episodes of After Degrassi. Hi Jen. She said have I ever related to a storyline and to be honest there are probably tiny elements obviously just the overall high school experience but I have to say my life was not as dramatic or troublesome or um, crazy as a lot of the isolated storylines in Degrassi. Uh, obviously the show exists to tackle issues and people do deal with these issues. These are real life issues. I'm just kind of boring. And maybe I actually am lucky that I didn't have to go through a lot of the terrible things that these characters go through and portray in the show. Uh, in fact, I do consider myself lucky. You know, I was bullied as a kid, you know, before high school, not in high school. Um, 
I think maybe the only other thing I relate to, and again, there's different characters like, you know, I mentioned Spike and even Imogen in, in the newer um, version of Degrassi, Next Class. Um, they're the weirdos, like they're the kind of oddballs, like artsy, like friends with everyone, but quirky and weird and feel out of place. And I mean, that was essentially me. Um, but I kind of fit in by the time I got into high school, but I was just like friends with everyone and didn't really fit in. So those were probably the most relatable characters. Um, in terms of anything specific, specific, quite truthfully, like, you know, luckily I didn't have parental abuse or I didn't get molested by a teacher. And like, these are some heavy, heavy things. Um, I mean, I didn't do drugs in high school, so I don't have these experiences. So I pretty much was just living through the drama of Degrassi, like not wishing I had those experiences, but thinking that their lives were, you know, that these kids' lives were way more interesting than mine. The Willard of Oz said, what is your all time favorite Degrassi scandal shocking moment? This is a hard one and I had to mull over some things because I have many faves. There's so many shocking moments. We touched a little bit on Jimmy getting shot. That was awful and shocking. I can't even remember if I saw it when it really happened or if I saw it as like an aftermath, like going back and watching that episode. So that one doesn't rank necessarily top for me. The one I think was shocking when I was watching Degrassi Junior High was when Shane did acid. <laughs> and he was under a bridge and he pretty much went into a coma and then he came had to come back to school as like a special needs student hey look who's back wheels shame um. that is awful in fact even talking about it i'm getting chills like that is a really heavy brutal storyline and so much a psa about not doing drugs uh it scared the shit out of me i didn't do any of those drugs and never have and never will um so that i would say is probably shocking as a young person watching that in real time when it actually happened and then you know it, it comes full circle and i and i love obviously spike and shane's character and they have emma and then emma's in the next generation and i just love how degrassi did all of those through lines and kept it going for decades there's that episode two where one of my favorite people, Jonathan Torrance, who plays Shane as an adult, Emma's dad, when he is disabled and he comes back and she finds him and he trashes the place. And th that is also a great episode and a great storyline and a full circle moment. Then when I watched the show for Much Music, we did a special about Cam's suicide. And I think that episode when Eli and Claire discover Cam um, in the, I think it's like the shed in the back of the school, like the garden thing. Uh, that's awful. That was an awful episode. We had a whole Much Talk suicide episode on uh, Much Music to kind of like um, just create discussion and community around the topic because Degrassi uh, has has walked the line of suicide many, many times, but I think that particular episode is where they go full on with it. And it's pretty shocking. And again, handled very well. It's done very well. I love that episode. And it really created a lot of um, interesting connection with the audience that I think was really beneficial as someone who worked in television, producing content, working with that show and that cast and those writers um, to kind of come up with that special was interesting. And um, I'm glad I got to take part in that. So that would be a second a second tier shocking moment from Degrassi. Okay, thanks for sending in all of your hashtag Ask Lauren Degrassi edition questions. Hopefully that was fun for you. Let's just one more time. Wake up in the morning feeling All right, go watch Degrassi and Degrassi Junior High right now on YouTube on the Encore Plus Media YouTube channel, which I've linked in the description of my video here and in the iCard. So click it now, go subscribe, watch Degrassi from beginning to end, enjoy your life. You know where I'm gonna be every evening now for the next little while yeah okay thanks so much for watching i'll see you guys soon bye